Just let me hear some of that rock and roll music in your way. This is Katie with Vintage and Vinyl, and I'll be spinning some rock and 50s records every week here on my channel, as well as sharing some cool Coca-Cola collectibles and other neat vintage finds. Stay tuned! Hey guys, this is Katie with Vintage and Vinyl, and we are in the dark today because I am about to show you some wonderful uranium and Vaseline glass. I have my black light flashlight at the ready, and I am going to perform some amazing magic tricks, and you don't want to miss out on that. I'm also going to be showing some beautiful etched Fossoria, Westmoreland, and other fun glass coming up. So I want to talk about uranium glass a little bit. If for all of those who didn't see my first video, uranium glass was founded sort of around 1830 and they found it as a good way to color glass. Before that, there really wasn't a, a great way to make glass kind of this beautiful green and yellow color. So uranium was perfect for that. Now, during the war, it was banned, so no one could have uranium, and I've heard from Tim and over the years that they actually came in and took it out of people's houses. I have not heard that before, but that is really, really fascinating. And I know around 1950s, when the war ended, a lot of uranium glass started being able to be produced again. So during that war time, you don't really see a lot of pieces. And I also love that uranium glass was used as a natural nightlight. Now, if you have this uh, uranium glass at home, you can do this experiment, and it's really cool because it worked when I did it, and I was just thrilled. But basically, you can take a piece of uranium glass and stick it by a window as the nighttime starts to come around, so around dusk and it glows. I don't know what about that time makes it glow because it's obviously not under black light, but it does glow and I've heard that that was a really good natural nightlight and people would actually set it by their windows and make it illuminate so that they could have this nightlight instead of using something with a flame. So I find that really, really fascinating. So the first piece of glass I'm going to share with you is a beautiful celery bowl by the Indiana Glass Company in the tea room pattern. Now I am in love with this pattern. I don't know what it is about this pattern that just makes my heart happy, but it does. It is so art deco and so beautiful. And I have a piece of paper here <clears throat> so you guys can see it better but it's just gorgeous. Really, really love this pattern. And they made salt and pepper shakers. You can get a sugar and creamer. I believe it also came in a pink color. I have this beautiful uranium glass here. It's just absolutely stunning. Now, Indiana glass started in Dunkirk, Indiana by the Beatty Brandy Company, actually in 1897. And what's interesting about them is then they were purchased by the National Glass Company in 1899. Of course, when the bankers panic happened in 1907, Indiana Glass swooped in and bought that company. So they then became the powerhouse known as Indiana Glass. So this piece is stunning. You don't see these celery bowls a lot. I mean, I know that this pattern is out there, but I never see it. And online, you sometimes see these going for $40 or $50 a piece. So I was really thrilled to find this. And it does glow. Oh, look at that. I mean, look how absolutely amazing and beautiful this piece of glass is. I don't know if that's showing up as well as I'm seeing it in person, but wow. I mean, this is probably one of my very favorite pieces of glass in my house. I just love this. Now the next piece is a unique piece because I could not find the maker or the pattern and I searched on glass groups, I searched online, I just didn't know what this was and Tim at over the years was a big help because he was able to identify this right off the bat and then of course a few weeks later my uh, glass book came in and I have several glass books but I ordered this one because it was recommended to me on the glass depression glass Facebook page and it's Warman's depression glass book really handy I recommend this 
if you guys are looking for a good place to start when getting a glass book, this has a lot of common patterns and unusual finds. So I love this. And yes, it did have the bow knot pattern right in it. And I did not have this, but thanks to Tim, before I got the book, I was able to identify what this was. And Tim mentioned it, but this book also has it, that the maker is unknown. And it's probably from 1920 to around 1930. But it's really this gorgeous Art Deco bowl, just beautiful. I love that kind of scalloped edge there with the, the pattern inside, the pressed pattern. It's just so beautiful. And of course, it lights up green. So this is fun. Really, really just a gorgeous little berry bowl here. And I actually don't use it as a berry bowl, but I do keep things in my bathroom inside of it that I use every day. So this is a perfect little bowl for that. Now, the next piece I want to show you is not uranium glass. It's actually Vaseline glass. And I had been calling them the same thing. And then I saw that wonderful deep dive that Tim and over the years did. And he explained that there's actually a difference. That Vaseline glass is more of a yellowy glass than that green color. So what I have to share with you is a really beautiful teacup and saucer in the princess pattern by Anchor Hawking. Now Anchor Hawking was founded in 1905 in Lancaster, Ohio. And this is just a really, really beautiful set. I think that this is gorgeous. And it might be coming a little bit more peach, coming across more peach on camera, but it is yellow um, in person and it's beautiful. And yes, it does light up. Probably not as well on camera, but it is glowing. Yeah, you can see that there a little bit. And it's just beautiful really really gorgeous piece of glass and then again you have this wonderful scalloped kind of edge i don't know if you'd call that scalloped and has kind of that scalloped look but it's a really lovely pattern and it is not just it's just not showing up on camera there it is a little bit you can see it glow but this is just lovely and i love teacups and saucers and i love uh, uranium and Vaseline glass in this pattern is spectacular by Anchor Hawking in the princess pattern. So that is all the uranium and Vaseline glass I'm going to share with you, but I have some fantastic, beautiful etched pieces coming up. So stay tuned. I'm going to go turn on the lights so you guys can see these a little better and we'll jump in. So I'm back with the lights on now and we can all take a look at some really beautiful glass. I have some Faustoria, some Westmoreland, and some unknown glass to share with you all. But I wanted to talk a little bit about Faustoria coin. Now this is a pattern that I absolutely love. I have several Faustoria coin pieces, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the coins themselves. A lot of new collectors can get duped into buying coin that was not actually made by Faustoria. So let me tell you a little bit about Faustoria. Faustoria was founded in 1887 in Faustoria, Ohio, but they were bought by the Lancaster Colony Company in 1983. They got all of Faustoria's molds for the coin glass, so they started reproducing this coin glass. And unfortunately, when they did it, they didn't do it very well and the colors are sort of way off. So I'm gonna show you a Lancaster Colony coin piece and then an original Faustoria. And we'll talk about the differences a little bit because I feel like that's really important to note when you are buying this glass. Now, of course, the Lancaster Colony is still beautiful glass. It is not as well done. I think as Faustoria's original coin that was produced in the 50s to 60s. And the coin pattern was very popular because either you had mid-century modern in your house or you had colonial. People really loved colonial, so this featured a lot of Americana motifs from the time. So this piece of Faustoria coin is in the amber color. Now I want to show you the coins up close because this is where you really have to pay attention 
when you're looking at Fostoria coin. So I'm going to put in a piece of paper so you can maybe see this a little bit better. Now, the amber color, from what I know, was never reproduced by Lancaster Colony. So if you get an amber color, most likely it is an original Fostoria piece made by Fostoria. So the coins on the good pieces, and not that Lancaster is terrible, but personally I like the real Fostoria versions. I don't know if this will show up, but the coins will be really pristine looking. They will be crisp, they will be clean, there won't be any fuzzy or haziness to them. And this is an original. You can see that it has this kind of impress design there. And then it's really, really crisp and clean. Now, Faustoria used two methods to make the coins frosted. The first method was acid washing. Now, those are the original first generation Faustoria coins. And you will see those out there. Of course, a lot of collectors prefer that and they will command a little bit of a higher price tag because they are acid washed. Now, the government banned that process, so then Faustoria went to sandblasting. Now, sandblasting, some of the coins are good, but they won't, the frosting won't always be perfectly centered around the edges but that's still Faustoria. Now, when the Lancaster Colony Company got the molds, they really messed up the sandblasting, and sometimes the, the frosting is so off-centered, it's really bad, and it's very fuzzy. You can't even see the coins, and the colors are much darker than the original pieces. So this is a footed Faustoria coin, candy dish, made by the Lancaster Colony Company. The original Faustoria coin did make red, but it was more of a tomato red than this blood red. And I don't know if the coins are gonna show up well on camera, but you can see sort of how fuzzy that is. You can't even see the date. Like this coin is supposed to say 1883, and I can't even read that on there. And it's not centered very well at all, the frosting. And there's, sometimes they do so much sandblasting now, almost the coin is completely gone off the piece. So, I love the color of this candy dish. That's the reason I, I got it. I think it's beautiful. But the coins certainly aren't very well done. And this is a piece by the Lancaster Colony Company. Now, I do have some beautiful Faustoria coin candlesticks. These are acid wash. So, these are going to be the first line of production for Faustoria coin. They are in this clear crystal, and you can really see the imprints of that coin. You can see how well they're done. They're very crisp, very, very clean, very well indented, and they're just frankly beautiful. And I love, love, love this design. And I'm not trying to say that I'm a snob by any means. I mean, I love all coin. But if you're out there and you're looking for pieces, I really would try to get the acid washed or the sand blasted pieces by Faustoria before they went to the Lancaster Colony Company. And if you look on eBay, a lot of the stuff that you'll see will be the Lancaster Colony. So just look for clear, crisp coins with even frosting and really good design. You know, anything that's hazy, super, super off-center. Now remember, Faustoria had some off-center pieces, but they weren't as off-center in the middle. Uh, Lancaster Colony pieces were very off-center in the middle. So hopefully this shows up on camera and you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. But these clear glass um, candlesticks are just just beautiful. I love these. And you can hear my dog Louie partaking in the action. She's actually got a pillow that she's not supposed to have off the couch, so I better go take that from her. Louie, I'm sorry, Louie's just going a little bit crazy right now. But that is the Faustoria coin. So just know about that when you're in the market shopping. Now the next piece is very special to me because it's a picture that was given to me by my grandmother. She got this for her wedding and it is in the Faustoria Navarre pattern. It has this gorgeous, gorgeous etching and I stopped 
some paper towels in it in hopes that you can see that. But you know what? That's not coming out on camera. So let me take, there you go. You can really see that now. Is that just not beautiful? I love Fostoria's designs and I think their glass is just beautiful. And it has sort of this paneled design a little bit in the glass. Uh, and it is just gorgeous. I love, love, love this pitcher. And I actually use it. I, I put it out at parties and I serve tea in it and other uh, beverages and it's just wonderful. So the next piece of glass is a beautiful piece that I recently picked up. It is a molded piece of glass. You can see the mold seam, but it's also cut glass because it has a cut design. Now, a lot of companies made designs like this. This is the star design with the leaves, and I don't know who made this. It's not in any of my glass books. If any of you guys know, please let me know. This is a mayonnaise set. So you have the bottom and then the little three-toed bowl to go with it, and it's just beautiful. So let me put in a piece of paper so that you can see this pattern a little bit better. It is really, really lovely. And I love amber glass. I mean, really, I love all glass, but it's just beautiful. And I love bowls that have the, the toes. I don't know why, but I think that's really, really adorable. But here is this, and then you can see the cut design around the outside. That's cut glass. It's been filed down, so it's not sharp like typical cut glass, but really nice pieces would have taken the time uh, to file that down. Uh, good companies would have. And then you, of course, have the cut um, bottom here with that kind of star pattern or starburst, whatever you want to call that. And it's just a lovely little bowl. So I enjoy using this on my counter. Now the next piece and the last piece I'm going to share with you is a piece of Westmoreland glass. Now Westmoreland was found in, in Liverpool, Ohio. They branched out from the Specialty Glass Company in 1889 and they made some of the best milk glass pieces out there. And this is not milk glass, but it is a piece of Westmoreland in the toothpick style. So it's a toothpick holder. The design is actually called Old Quilt, and it is just gorgeous. It's a piece of pressed glass. You can see the seam, and it has the two little adorable handles. And on the bottom, it is marked Westmoreland. So I'm going to talk a little bit about those marks for Westmoreland glass. So this piece has the WG. When you see that, that's typically 1940s and newer. When you just see the W on Westmoreland pieces, you'll typically have a date of around 1910 to 1929. So this has the W inside the G. And I don't know that that's going to show up there. Um, it's really tiny. It's in the middle here. But definitely look for that on the bottom. Most more Westmoreland pieces, to my knowledge, were marked. Some might have had the foil sticker. So a lot of people did unfortunately take those off, but this is a very pretty common Westmoreland pattern, this old quilt design. And I believe in the video that I did on milk glass, I might have called it the pineapple pattern. And if I did, I'm terribly sorry. This is not the pineapple. There is a similar design to this that Westmoreland made, but this is the old quilt pattern. So I love this little beautiful, ruby red glass here and it's perfect in my kitchen so i hope you guys enjoyed this lovely glass i just am enamored by this stuff i can't get enough of it my whole house has glass everywhere it's just amazing to me see louie agrees she loves the glass so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope this week you will stay in stay safe and binge youtube that's why i go for that rock and roll any old